Next on Broadway Profiles, Inside in the Heights, one of the biggest movies of 2021 coming straight out of Broadway. We're talking to the stars of the film like Anthony Ramos and more. Plus the man who made the music, Lin-Manuel Miranda. We've got clips from the film. We'll also take you on location to Washington Heights where the movie was made. And we'll flash back to when In the Heights was Broadway's hottest ticket. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles, presented by Broadway.com. So glad you could be here. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Well, before there was Hamilton, there was In the Heights, the first Broadway musical from the mind of Lin-Manuel Miranda, held back a full year by the pandemic. Now the wait is finally over. Lights up on Washington Heights up at the break of day. I wake up and I got this little punk I gotta chase away. Pop the grate at the crack of dawn, sing while I wipe down the awning. Hey, y'all, uh, good morning. It is a movie musical of end of the year, certain to be one of the biggest movies of the summer. In the Heights is a love letter to a New York City neighborhood, starring Anthony Ramos in a star-making turn as Usnavi. It's the story of the mostly Latino community in Manhattan's Washington Heights community during a very hot summer on a, quote, block that was mostly disappearing. The Broadway show won four Tony Awards, including Best Musical. It's about regaining hope and perhaps a perfect film for this moment in time as New York City and the world begin to come back to life. So let's get to it. Not long ago, it would have been almost impossible to believe, but for two years in a row, arguably the biggest movie of the summer comes straight from Broadway. Right, Paul? That's right, Tamsin. The wait is over. Last summer, Hamilton helped so many of us get through the pandemic. And now, after a COVID-19 delay, the film version of Lin-Manuel Miranda's first Tony-winning hit, In the Heights, is finally here. I got to chat with the stars prior to the June 11th premiere in theaters and on HBO Max. I am Usnavi and you probably never heard my name. Reports of my fame are greatly exaggerated. Morning, Usnavi. Pan caliente, cafe hey. con leche. I got to see you a few years ago play Usnavi at the Kennedy Center and you were so good. And I remember saying to you, you got to do this on Broadway, but hey, you you went up that. You're doing the movie. It, it's just... It's a dream, you know, like, and also to be able to share this with like people I love too. My mom is in the movie, my sister's in the movie, you know, um, like that kind of stuff, that kind of stuff is so special to me. And, and um, you know, and, you know, as much as it would have been amazing to play the role on Broadway, it, it was really special to play, to play this part in the film version, man, and to actually be filming in the streets in New York and to actually like, you know, be getting after it, you know, for, for the five months that we, we did working on this movie. Um, it was a dream, man. It really was. It really, really was. Um, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had in my whole life. What do you connect to about this guy, Usnavi? He's just a guy in a bodega. He has a crush. He's trying to figure out his future. But what, what, what do you connect to about him? Aren't we all just a guy working somewhere, a person working somewhere who has a crush just trying to figure everything, right? Like, aren't we all to some degree that person? We could say right there, that's how I relate to him. But I mean, you know, he's a dude that loves his family. You know, he cares about cares about his, his family. You know, he cares about his community. He reminded me of this dude who, this 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 man who, who ran this bodega around the corner from where I, I grew up. His name was Leo. And Leo, like, Leo knew all the gossip, he knew everything that was happening on the block. Everybody was coming in and out of his store, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Leo was, uh, you know, he was giving candy to the kids, you know, all that, all of that. So he was like that dude that you look forward to, to seeing when you came into the bodega. It was like that little piece of like joy. And yeah. um, I think Usnavi represents that in spite of like whatever he's going through in his own life. Um, you know, he's like, he's just like this beacon of, of hope. And what's so amazing is that he does, he's not even the kind of guy that would see himself as a hero or see himself as like a lead per se, right? Of anything. It's just like, yo, I'm just like, I'm just trying to make it out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to make it out here. I'm trying to say what I see, you know, through these songs, through this verse. And I'm just trying to like bring out into this world. And we'll check back in with Paul again in a few minutes with more great stars. But first, Lin-Manuel Miranda. In the Heights was, of course, his first Broadway musical. He not only wrote the music and lyrics, but also originated the lead role as Usnavi. Now you'll see him in the movie, too, in a smaller part. 
It's a role he never intended to play. We caught up with Lynn to talk to him about joining the cast and filming in the neighborhood where he grew up, Washington Heights. It actually took a lot of convincing to get me into this movie. I, I really wanted to be able to say, listen, we made our thing with our Heights family on Broadway and like go forth with my blessing and I can't wait to see what you make. And Kiara and John were really sort of the co-conspirators on this. Um, you know, John was like, I haven't cast Pidagua guy yet. He just kept saying that. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, cast someone good, bye. <laughs> like, I, I, I will be watching from my little uh, producer chair. Um, and then um, Kiara called me one day and she was like, you know, the studio is going to want to cut Piragua because it doesn't really do anything story-wise. And she goes, but I have an idea on how to save it. And I go, <laughs> okay, what's your idea on, oh, <laughs> it was one of those calls. And then, you know, what I, what, what ended up being uh, the joy of playing in Piraguero was, you know, the, the weird sort of bittersweet thing that happened in 2008 was my grandfather passed away mm. the week after Heights opened. Um, I was, we were celebrating opening night and then the next Sunday, uh, I was on a plane to Puerto Rico to, to say goodbye to him before he passed. And so I just said, let me make this just the love letter to my, I'm just gonna play my grandfather. So I'm wearing mm -hmm. his glasses around my neck. I'm wearing my socks up way too high. When I watched a cut of the film with my Puerto Rico family, with my cousins for the first time, the way they screamed, like, I can't wow. believe they let you dress like Abuelo we sing in a major motion picture. <laughs> let me get an amaretto sour for this ghetto flower. How are you so pretty? You complete me, you have me a hello, you know you need me, truly, madly, deeply, let's get freaky. At this point, I feel about the movie the way I feel about the neighborhood itself. There are so many layers of memories inside it. You know, I can watch a sequence like When You're Home, and I can remember writing that song when I was just about my third date with Vanessa, who would become <laughs> my wife, which was us taking each other to our favorite spots in Washington Heights and saying, well, this is where I used to go when I grew up in this, right? Like, it is the Benny and Nina trajectory. Um, and and then, you know, fast forward to 2019, and they're dancing to this thing in J. Hood Wright Park, which I used to walk through with my son to take him to preschool uh, every day. And, you know, my, my wife's grandmother's building uh where she raised my father-in-law is is visible in the frame and so again like it's these layers of layers of, of joyful memories on top of each other something that's made in the heights so special from day one on broadway is lin-manuel miranda's signature hip-hop style and that's still true in the film like this song Join together, two little phone call a lot of office. We sold a winner yesterday. What's the payout? 96,000. Dollars, holla. 96,000 takes place when Usnavi, the bodega owner, finds out someone in the neighborhood hit the lottery and won $96,000. So let's flash back more than a decade to the premiere of the music video and a young Lin-Manuel Miranda. Hi, this is Lynn Miranda uh, from In the Heights, and you're about to see the world premiere of a new video for 96,000. Broadway.com was there when we recorded our cast album. World premiere video! Boop, boop, boop. 96,000. Yo, if I won the lotto tomorrow, well, I know I wouldn't bother going on no spending spree. I'll pick a business school and pay the entrance fee. Then maybe if you're lucky, you'll stay friends with me. I'll be a businessman richer than Nina's daddy. My money's making money. I'm going from po to moto. Keep the bling. I don't want the brass ring like Proto. Oh, no, here goes Mr. Braggadocio. Next thing you know, you're lying like Pinocchio. Imagine how we we'll feel going real slow down the highway of life with no regrets. The film's got so many great moments and so many great stars. Let's send it back to Paul with Jimmy Smith and Olga Merides. This is such a sort of magical production. What was it like to actually watch the finished product? I was completely overwhelmed because you know, Paul, I've had this this journey with this show and this character. And to see it up there, I was overwhelmed. I had to take a moment and go to the ladies' room and just, I had to hold on to something. It was just, I was very emotional. I haven't really thought about it in, in, in this way, but when you said magical, it it is magical to see it on screen. After having seen it in these different iterations off Broadway, on Broadway and to see it open up in the way that it has and these flourishes that were made by Kiara and Lynn story-wise and at the same time with John's 
cinematic visualization of it. I, I, it, there were sequences where it just, it just took my breath away. Olga, I have been a fan of yours for many years. And you know, it's a short list of stars that get to recreate a character from the stage to the screen. And I'm so thrilled that you are on that list. Thank what you. does this moment mean for you? You know, they asked me, would you like to audition for this movie? I went, of course, you know? <laughs> and so um, it's just, it feels, it's 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 uh, magical to use that word. And Jimmy, it sounds like you came into this. It sounds like you came into this as a a fan of of the show, and you bring such a a big audience with you. Have it, you know, having you in this movie is, is really important. I think to to opening it up to people. Is, is it safe to assume that you said yes immediately? You were like, sure, yes, I'm in. I'm ecstatic that I was able to bring a small contribution to something that I really love, that I think has something to say. And it, you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't gonna be really heavy lifting for me on a, on a vocal level. I have four different vocal coaches on two coasts for four, for four lines, but that's okay. <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't? But it, it checks off the, that, that box in, 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 in my bucket list of being part of something like this. In the Heights was filmed on location in New York City in Upper Manhattan. We sent our camera up to Washington Heights to check out some of the real life spots where the movie was made. One of the prettiest shots in the film is when Benny and Nina share a special moment. That's J. Hood Wright Park on West 173rd Street. That park includes a playground, basketball courts, and the George Washington Bridge is so close it feels like you could reach out and grab it. There's a big choreographed dance scene in the swimming pool in the movie. Well, that's the High Bridge Pool in High Bridge Park, named after the oldest bridge in New York City. Right now, the pool is empty, but all NYC pools reopen June 26. There's another cool series of shots during another dance number in a bright graffiti-covered subway station. That's a 191st Street tunnel at St. Nicholas and 191st, the entrance to the deepest subway station in New York City. The train tracks are 173 feet, or about 18 stories below street level. About seven years ago, the city commissioned about half a dozen artists to paint those colorful murals on the walls of the thousand-foot-long tunnel. We talked to another one of the stars of the film, Daphne Rubin Vega, about what it was like making the movie in Washington Heights. People opening their homes to us, sitting on their, you know, on their stoops, um, playing dominoes, you know. I can't get Dasha Polanco out of my head playing dominoes with the guys in the corner for real, you know. Um, yeah, just, just the sights and smells and um, all good, all good, all New York. Let's check back in with Paul one more time. He caught up with Kiera Alegria Hudes, who wrote the book for the original Broadway musical In the Heights. I'm very excited. How do you feel to finally uh, now be at this moment and to know that millions of people will be entering this world this summer? It's really thrilling knowing it's right around the corner. I just, when you were asking me that question, I just flashed back to like, times I would go and sit in the audience on Broadway and I would hear, uh, you know, you'd hear like little girls being like, that's me. I'm Chili Dominique and Like you'd see kids' eyes light up. And so, yeah, it's gonna be even more of that um, with with the wider audience release. What was sort of the germ of the idea? If you could sort of summarize, what, what excited you about it way back then when you first started working on it? I mean, the thing that got me hooked when they were asking me to join as playwright was Lynn's songs. I thought, you know, they're just so fun, so light-footed, so dexterous, um, so musical. And I was like, this is really cool. Like, he's he's has such a facility with language. Can we raise our voice tonight? Can we make a little noise tonight? <laughs> And the other thing that I, I was like, the story that really interests me is in the story of a community rising or falling together, in this case, rising together, even when its members take different paths. Lynn said you basically convinced him to be a Piragua guy by appealing to him as a writer. Like basically that like the song would probably not end up in the film if he was not 
Oh, if he didn't do it. He. I, I'm, I'm very tickled that he admitted that. Yeah, no, I threatened him. <laughs> I was like, you know, it's really expensive to make a musical. And so every song has to justify its presence budget wise. And because Spiragua is not a song that really a lot of the plot hinges on, that was on the chopping block over and over and over again. And it was going to get cut. And it's a fan favorite. It's such a great song. And I was like, Lynn, the only way they're going to let me keep this song is if you do it. There's still a lot more to talk about on this edition of Broadway Profiles. Still ahead, from stage to screen to streaming, Alfred Molina has done it all. I'm talking to him about his new online performance and his return to the Marvel Universe. I'm Tamsin Fidel. We'll be right back. The Tony Awards are happening, and now we know when. The Tony Awards present Broadway's Back will air Sunday, September 26. The show will celebrate the best of the 2019-2020 season, as well as a return of live theater. We're going to see a live concert event featuring the biggest stars of Broadway finally reuniting on stage and an award show. The concert airs on CBS. The awards will be handed out on Paramount+. Plus. September 26 is a date, and we'll be there covering it all for you. All And more big news about the return of Broadway, it's coming back even sooner than we thought. The last show to win the Tony Award for Best Musical, Town. It's now on the books as the first Broadway show to reopen. Performances slated to resume September 2nd. This is Broadway Profiles, and we'll be right back. Alfred Molina is everywhere. You saw him in one of the 2020's most celebrated and provocative movies, Promising Young Woman. He's also returning to the Marvel Universe and what's sure to be one of the biggest movies of 2021 in Spider-Man No Way Home. And this weekend, he's headlining the new play, We Have to Hurry, a performance to benefit the Actors Fund. We had a chance to talk. Talk to me a little bit about We Have to Hurry because I think it's just a fascinating concept and just very timely. Well, I, I think you're absolutely right. It is timely and it's, it's happening at a, at a moment when you know, we're we're finding all kinds of fantastic discoveries about you know new ways of taking care of ourselves, new ways to to heal, new ways to just to live, and uh, you know it, it's 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 kind of exciting when you read about all this stuff. And, and the one thing that doesn't get talked about very often is how do you navigate social situations? How do you stay current in the world? when you've reached a certain age, when the world doesn't seem to really either even know you're there. But this play, I think, that is is exciting simply because it is hitting on something that is so timely. And, um, and this could just, we could be just on the cusp of what we're gonna be seeing. It was interesting, and this is the world that those of us who are, you know, older, I'm certainly, I'm, I'm legally and officially a senior, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, a, I think it's a world that we all have to start inhabiting and not be too scared of, which is this new world of technology like this, you know, Zoom and, and, and all the rest of it. It's a little intimidating. Sure. And you kind of retreat from it a little bit because you're not quite sure how it works and you don't want to make a fool of yourself and you don't want to, you don't want to look stupid. So you're kind of like, oh, you know, I'll stick to, I'll stick to emails, you know. But we, I think we need to embrace the future the future is no longer something that you can just encapsulate with phrases like, well, you know, the few years I've got left. And right. uh, you know, we're going to well, be here for it. We're going to be here gonna, for the future. We're going to be here for a while. <laughs> you know, millennials might hate me here, might hate hearing that, but, you know, we're going to be here a while. One more note Alfred Molina made headlines about a month ago when he dropped a couple of major spoilers about the new Spider Man movie. Well, I asked him about that too. Okay, explain this one to me. It's maybe the worst kept secret in Hollywood, but explain exactly what the Marvel multiverse is. Different stories involving the same characters can happen simultaneously in different universes. And that's the fascination. That's this beautiful kind of world that Marvel have created where, in a sense, they've completely freed up the whole notion of how do you tell a story mm -hmm. it's not necessarily sequential it doesn't have to be you know you don't you can't you don't necessarily have to think in terms of the sequel the prequel it's not linear it's all happening all at the same time so in other words what it is it's 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 a liberation of the imagination 
That's what the multiverse is. Did you have any uh, any nerves or concerns going back to that role after all this time? Um, well, you- we'll talk about that. Like- we'll talk about that after the event. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs>